Well, today the DNQ Karting Series takes a break from its road course racing and comes to Millbridge Speedway on the dirt. Today, it's the Backstreet Massage 40, and it's coming up next on Speed. Today, it's the Backstreet Massage 40 for the Millbridge Speedway, the first time DNQ's on dirt. I'm Bob Duato, and here for the first time ever, expert analyst Charles Lewandowski. Bob, great to be here. Let's check out my weather uh, report here. 32 degrees, I guarantee you that's going to affect the event. Well, Bronson Butcher's family sponsored this race, and he's down there with Derek Pernasiglio. Well, it may be Australia Day down under, but Bronson Butcher's on the other side of the world, and of course, he's going racing today. His family sponsored the racing here at the Millbrook Speedway today. You have some experience on dirt, but not many laps here at this racetrack. No, you're right. Not many laps. Um, most of my experience is on road courses, like at the Motorplex, but I'm looking forward to this race today. It's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of good carts out here. And uh, no, thankful to my parents for sponsoring the event and uh, Eddie and Steve for putting it on. It's a lot of hard work and uh, I'm sure it'll pay off. What are the big differences with driving styles compared to road courses and then racing dirt ovals? Uh, there is a lot. Um, it took a long time to get used to. Um, it's hard to say really. It's just all about how you feel the cart, the reactions of the cart. Um, of course the chassis is a complete, completely different. Um, so, I mean, it's just what comes naturally, I guess. Are you enjoying racing on dirt ovals, or is you still just rather run on road courses like the DNQ Karting Series does? I love racing on ovals. Uh, that's why I came here. If I wanted to race road courses, I could have stayed home. But, uh, no, I like racing on ovals. Very competitive, and a lot of good races out here, so I enjoy it. Have you set a goal for yourself today? I mean, you don't have a lot of laps here. There's some drivers that race in the DNQ series that have never run dirt in their lives, and they're going to be out there today. What is the main objective for you today? I think we'll be competitive. I mean, we've got enough laps run at Woodley for Millbridge, uh, where I think we'll be able to at least hang the top five. And uh, as long as we're there in the end, I think anything can happen in the final laps. And, uh, We'll see if we can't come away with a win. Well, Bronson Butcher is always a contender whether he hops in a cart on a road course or on an oval. He does have a few laps here at the Millbridge Speedway, and we'll see how that experience helps him this afternoon. Always good to hear from Bronson Butcher, but let's talk about one of these legendary car owners that is making their first DNQ start today, Lauren Rainier and Rainier Racing. Yeah, Bob, uh, Rainier Racing is very well known in the go-kart world. Um, competed at Field Filler Fairgrounds making their DNQ Dirt debut with a very talented driver, Tutal Medill. Well, you see right there, Ryan Flores holding the checkered flag, won the field at the Field Fair Fairgrounds in the same cart quite a few times. Their driver, Tutal, is down with Derek. Well, the picture may look a little bit off, but the nickname goes with him. It's Michael Tutal Medill. He gives up his amateur status to race here this afternoon at the Millbridge Speedway, but you've never run on dirt before, have you? Uh, I've actually got some past dirt experience racing street stocks, but, I mean, that was like a century ago, it seems like. So uh, we're just looking forward to get some experience and some track time and go from there. You're in a real familiar looking ride. This ride has dominated at the Field Filler Fairgrounds, but it's a much different type of racetrack over there. A lot smaller, a lot tighter, but it's also pavement. Yeah, well, first off, I just want to thank Lauren Rainier for giving us this opportunity to come out and uh, run with these guys. And, uh, uh, you know, Field Filler's a lot tighter track. Uh, I think here with the clone motor, we should uh, be able to free up the car a little bit more. And there's definitely a lot of adjustments still to make. And uh, I think we're, we'll be all right. How exciting is it to be able race on dirt you run on pavement all season long uh it's totally different i mean the road course stuff and the rental cart series is uh a lot of fun and now it's good to uh, get on dirt and see what we can do against these guys that probably don't have any experience either now why give up your amateur status now that you have to move up to pro next year did you want to just come here and run on dirt that bad that you were willing to give up your status well, I gave up my status at the banquet uh, just telling them that I felt like we won an amateur championship. Why not go run with the Pro Series? And uh, why not just go ahead and go big for uh, 2014 and go ahead and run on dirt, too? Well, going big is something that Tutal knows all about. He's going to try going big here today at the Millbridge Speedway, moving up a division from the amateurs to the pros. Well, I, I don't know. Tutal Modil giving up his amateur status, but one driver who's definitely not an amateur is Jason Eifert. 
Yeah, Jason, uh, from what I've been told in the garage area this morning, is the guy to beat. Very successful here at Millbridge. Very successful in the, the carts on dirt. I, I agree. One of the guys to beat. Jason Eford has won many races at Millbridge Speedway and also at the Field Filler Fairgrounds, and he considers the dirt tracks to be the best place to showcase his talents. Well, Jason's down there with Derek Pernasiglia. Well, guys, one of the drivers that's going to be really tough to contend here this weekend is going to be Jason Eford. He's got a lot of laps here at the Millbridge Speedway. He's got a lot of experience on dirt, probably more experience than a lot of other drivers in the field today. And going into this race, Jason, how do you like to competition? Um, I do have a lot of laps here, but I haven't ran here in probably six, eight months. So as you get out of the seat, you kind of lose a little bit. So hopefully after practice, I'll know what I'm doing. Maybe I'll get it back. You've run a road course race earlier this year. Obviously, you're making rights and lefts, but you're on uh, an asphalt surface. Here you're on dirt. We're on an oval. The track is always changing, too. What are some of the things that a driver has to do to pull the racetrack today? You just got to yeah, know how to track changes if it gets, you know, if the it's harder, it's softer, it's slick. You gotta know how to prep tires and stuff. I love ovals way better than I do left and right. So we're back in somewhere I know what I'm doing or kind of know what I'm doing a little bit. What'll be the goal for you today? Obviously, you've won here before, and winning it is the ultimate goal. But what would you like to walk out of here doing today? Boomerang. I just want to. Jason Eford looking for a strong run. He likes his chances. He's got a lot of experience here at the Millbridge Speedway. Always good to hear from Jason Eford. Going to be a force to reckon with today. But let's take a look at some of the DNQ regulars that are racing in the dirt race today, Charles. Well, Bronson, uh, obviously with family ties to the event sponsor. Not sure about his dirt past. Uh, but Eddie Jr., Eddie DeHunt Jr., uh, has ran here before. And then you have Too Tall, which... Like I said, very talented, very underrated, and very tall. Well, fans are a big part of the DNQ karting series, and Stephen DeHunt is down with one of them. All right, how are you doing? I'm here with who I think is Casey Armstrong, who I may have seen at Whiskey River last night getting after it. Casey, how are you feeling this morning after a rough outing last night? It's uh, feeling pretty good. Uh, but no big deal, really. It's another night. Casey, can you tell me how many Keystones you are into today, and what is it about Keystone that gives you the advantage to be the number one fan of the DQ Karting Series? It's a uh, smooth, great beer, smooth. Casey, what, what are you eating here today? You are having quite a run with the alcohol and the food intake today. They got some of the best. Do you think that that's helping keep you warm? Yeah, they got some of the best corn dogs around out here at the Middle Bridge Speedway. Casey, what would you like to see in today's race? Well, there you have it from Casey. No one fan of the DQ card series. We're not sure if we'll see any silver for the rest of today. All right, well, earlier today we had the Leading Edge Graphics Heat Races. Leading Edge Graphics, a nice sponsor for the series. If you need decals, check out Leading Edge Graphics. They sponsored the Heat Races, and here they were earlier today, Charles. The Heat Races really, really set aside who the guys to beat were. Uh, Jason Eford really made a statement here in the first heat race leading edge heat race and uh they had some tough battles though too tall right there really really running good oh <laughs> uh clint stanley lost a hub there in this heat race and uh check it out again charles uh you've had a feeling like this sometimes yeah this is what happens when you don't nut and bolt your race car before you hit the track uh this is a a rookie mistake but uh, it happens to all of us luckily he was okay Jason Eford then again, after that caution, took the green flag and ran away with the heat race. As you see here, he was putting an impressive gap on these other carts. Yes, uh, like I said, Jason was one of the guys everyone mentioned to beat, and this heat race really showed everyone that uh, they weren't off on their statements. Jason Eford takes the win in that first one. Two tall deal, an impressive second. In heat race number two, the field was raring to go. Not much action in this one, Charles. Now, this one was more of a uh, spread out, just, uh, you know, everyone minding their own business, trying to feel out the racetrack and their uh, competitors. But um, still uh, some exciting points, but uh, was very, uh, very straightforward event. RJ Auto won the second heat race, as you see here, some onboard camera from Eddie Hunt Jr., Everybody knows that it's just a heat race. No need to push the issue. 
yeah, you know, this is uh, this is something where it does affect your starting position, so you want everyone you can get, but at the same time, if your stuff's on a flatbed, you're not going to run the feature where, and, and run for the big check. You seen right there RJ Auto taking the victory in the leading edge graphics heat race. Fifteen dollar purse for that. But our winners now with Steve. Here with heat race number one winner Jason Eford, an impressive win by several cars. Jason, what did you do to get to the front there? I've been prepping tires for a couple weeks now, you know. I don't want to come lose the DNQ. This is very much a bunch of pride here. We gotta we gotta win the fucking race. We can't lose a bunch of cars. Seven times for a long time. Paying off in it. Well, Jason, you're going to be starting on the pole for the feature race on the inside line. What's it going to take for 40 laps and a caution at the end for you to win today? It's got to be smooth and not make mistakes. Try to just do everybody I can. If they get, if they get in front of me, I'm going to put the bumper to them. They get hard, they can hit the wall. Maybe call the so I can relax because it is a long race. I need to now we're taking a quick peek at the 58 Lauren Rainier cart. Uh, the boys are uh, look like they're adjusting the valence for the feature event. But uh, let's go down to Stephen Hunt with second heat race winner, RJ Otto. I'm here with RJ Otto. He races for two winner. He'll be starting on the outside pole for today's event. RJ, while well, you're prepping tires and it smells horrible in here, what do you think it's going to do today? What do you think it's going to take to win this race? Uh, first of all, you know, it's going to take a good set of tires that's going to last all 40 laps, if you can do that. So that's why we've got a small bed flat on front of us. Anyways, uh, you know, if we can hang on, now, you know, it's all depends. This track can change a whole lot with the uh, many outlaw guys here. I don't know. It's whoever can hold on the longest and whoever the tires can stay on. RJ, we're hearing rumors that the winners of this race are going to throw down at Hot Shots after today's event. How many girls do you plan to bring to Hot Shots tonight if you do win? Oh, uh, I don't think my old lady would like that a whole lot. <laughs> RJ, we're going to have to get an answer out of this. If you win, remember, it's about trophies and women. No, I don't know. I've learned a lot from my good friend, Brandon Duff. Uh, Virgil, the car owner and crew chief on this machine, comes in with the answer late as RJ Auto tries to prepare his tires and hopes to win today's event. Well, one driver we're not seeing here today that's a main staple in the DNQ karting series is Brandon Nupp. Yeah, Bob, Brandon is a very, uh, well, self-proclaimed accomplished dirt racer. Uh, I'm surprised to not see him here. Um, looking forward to hearing his excuses why. Nup uh, will consider a dirt start when the purses get higher, but for now he is a hired tire consultant, and uh, he's down with Stephen Hunt to talk about tires. I'm here with the legendary Brandon Bad Boy Nup, famous for racing in the DQ Karting Series, Rental Series, who's actually going to be our inside tire guy for today with the engineering support that he has from Nuppenstein Speed Lab. Brandon, what can you tell us about the tires here today and how it's going to affect the cold racing conditions? Well, see, uh, the racetrack's a lot more wet than I anticipated, so a lot of guys are way, uh, way too hard on tires. And we've got to murder, murder the tires with prep and uh, get them down, get them soft so they can uh, get some fight today. Speed's not going to be an issue uh, due to the track conditions. It's pretty much suck. Uh, the racetrack comes around at all. Uh, we'll have a little better uh, setup. I definitely brought the wrong tires for today. Now, Brandon, I know you consult with a lot of teams that are here today. Who are some of the guys who are throwing out the most dollars for your advice today? Uh, well, you know, I like to keep that under wraps. You know, that's uh, that's going to be no and uh, for other people that are getting beat to find out. So, uh, keep that way. One last question for you, Brandon. When can we expect to see you at a Dirt Series DQ race? Uh, whenever it pays some money worth breaking my stuff out here. So, uh, uh, it's, I'm not going to break your stuff out until uh, the event gets a little bit better. So, from Brandon Nup, insider in the tires and expert on dirt races. Always good to hear Brandon Nup selling something that's $30 for $300, and uh, that's surely what he's doing down there as he's selling himself. But while that's going on, Charles, let's take a look at the Millbridge track facts. Well, Millbridge is hosting the first ever DNQ dirt race. It's located here in Salisbury, North Carolina. 
higher banked in one and two than three and four. I believe the upper groove is uh, may come into effect. Uh, multiple grooves, and it's, it is a great place to run cards. Well, Charles, up next, it's the D&Q Dirt Back Straight Massage 40 Live Feature. Wow, what a good-looking guy there. Sick of eating the same shit over and over again. Ah, damn it! Get out, mate. What the hell are you doing in my house? I'm Bronson Butcher, driver of DQ Carding Series. How about you have some wheat bix? Low in sugar, 97% whole grain, high in iron, zinc, and folate. Aussie kids are wheat bix kids. I think I'll give them a try. Wheat Bix, official breakfast cereal of Bronson Butcher and the DQ Carding Series. Are you a Wheat Bix kid? Go to www.wheatbix.com for your chance to win VIP pit passes to next year's Dan Quinn 500. Do you need cash or a quick payday? I'm Stephen DeHunt and I own Stephen DeHunt Investments. I can go anywhere, anytime. That's why I own boats, skyscrapers, and jets. Give us a call today at 1-800-GET-SD20 and I'll show you how just how quick I can get you paid up front. All we do here at SD20 is get money and that's why you need money and I got it. The D&Q Carding Series Back Straight Massage 40 is brought to you by Back Straight Massage and by Leading Edge Graphics. Check them out for some of your car decals. Well, the field's rolling off here, Charles, and uh, we're about to get ready to race. Yeah, let's get this starting lineup and get this race started. Well, in row number one, we have pole sitter Jason Eford and second heat winner RJ Auto. Row two is Mike Tuton Medill in the famous Rainier 58 and Sean Meekoff. Row number three features Eric Maycroft and in the number 74, Matt Brazelford. Row four has Ty Snipes in I-9 and Matt Holzbauer. Row number five features J.P. Egbert and Australian Bronson Butcher. Row six has Josh Heidkamp with Eddie DeHunt Jr. Row number seven on the inside, Clint Stanley, and on the outside, Brian Cole. And in the final row, Dakota Bailey and, of course, Danny O'Quinn Jr. Always leave a spot for Danny O'Quinn Jr. Well, let's talk to our DNQ in-race reporter. It's Bronson Butcher. Bronson, this is Bob Duato in the booth. You got me? Yeah, I got you, Bob. Bronson, how special would it be to win this race today on Australia Day? It means a lot. Uh, Australia Day is a big holiday in Australia. Um, there's not a lot of racing over there going on right now, so uh, it'd be good to keep the flame alive and, uh, and bring home the trophy today. Bronson, our question comes from Gregory Silk Milk Chalak in Charlottesville, Pennsylvania. Bronson, since today is Australia Day, is there any extra pressure on you to win today's race? Also, bro, what is Australia Day even about, and what the hell is Vegemite? Yeah, it's a bit of extra pressure. Uh, I'd definitely like to win today, especially with Backstreet Massage Sporting. That's a great company back home. I'd really like to represent the country in Backstreet Massage today. Australia Day is the day that the English invaded Australia and took over the country from the Aboriginals, and Vegemite is bread that you put on your sandwiches or toast or something, rather. All right, Bronson, thank you for your time, and good luck in today's race. Yeah, thanks, man. All right, Charles, one to go before we're green on the first ever D&Q dirt race. Now, this is when everyone gets a little tense, want to know who's around them, looking around, getting ready to go, waving to their girlfriends and uh, ex-wives. <laughs> <laughs> we got a couple in-cart cameras today. One of them is Michael Tutal Medill in the famed number 58 Rainier racing cart, and the other one is Eddie DeHaan Jr. I like Eddie's uh, position here. I spoke to him earlier, and he's really determined. He said, I'm going to go up to the front. I don't know if I have the cart to win, but I'm uh, I'm feeling good about my chances of making the show in here. Field coming off of the last corner. Oh, looks like, yeah, that, I don't think that start's going to last. Uh, Eford, they did not throw the green, so I think we're going to go ahead and line them back up. He got too good of a uh, jump there, Charles. Yeah, Jason just really got excited there. Uh, I, I think he knows he's got the cart to beat. He's got to... Relax a little bit, give it one more shot, and uh, 
Man, he's got to be careful. They're going to set him to the back if he pulls that stun again. Field line back up. A little bit tighter of a start here now. And uh, we're getting ready to go green on something that's going to be great in the future. Green flag. We are underway for the back straight massage 40. That's a picture-perfect start there. Uh, Eford got a little edge there coming off a two and down a back stretch. Mikoff powers up to the back of RJ Auto, and RJ's got a lot oh. of rolling speed there. Yeah, RJ uh, spoke to him as well, and he seemed to really think it was all tire management and everything like that. And then, uh, but he's going pretty hard, lap one. Let's look on board with Eddie DeHaan Jr. Looks like he's rolling the high side already. Yeah, he looks to be the only one really weighing, r r running right up there on a cushion. And uh, seems like it's working. Good momentum down the backstretch. Must have learned that from the high side tickler, Kyle Strickler. Well, as we run here, the running order is going to bleep around the top left corner. Eford out in front. Eford's definitely making an early... Uh, a charge here really oh we got a one pulling off there. we got a slow card out there and that's going to bring out our bojangles caution it's o time for danny o'quinn uh looked like matt brazelford has blown the engine in his cart and while that happened dakota bailey lost the chain yeah the the chains on these carts is something that just happens you know if uh you hit a rock pebble those things are coming off let's check in with bronson butcher real quick Bronson uh, is running mid-pack here. Uh, I think, you know, he's uh, shaking his stuff down, and I, I think he's someone to watch. Restart. Here we are. Green flag. We are back underway. Eford in the lead. Mikoff putting some early pressure on. I'll tell you, Mikoff had a great start there. Looks like he's got a little more motor than uh, Eford. Mikoff running the 390 carburetor. He had to put some extra weight on for it, but uh, looks like it's not really slowing him down. No, he's really running strong here. I think, uh, I think he's going to get there uh rj auto carrying a lot of momentum but he does not have the big engine and that's very very seeable as they head down the back stretch rj said he may not have the biggest motor but he's got the most talent so we'll see what where he ends up another caution is out and this time it is dakota bailey again and it looks like he is done for the day charles yeah i think that's his second deal in about four laps i think he needs to load it up once you pop the chain off, it does twist the chain, and uh, it never runs the same after that. Well, uh, the field pacing here for the back straight massage 40 under caution, and uh, I got a feeling at some point in time we're getting a long green flag run. Yeah, this is, I mean, it's 40 laps, which is still a sprint race, but it does have, you know, it's, a, it's several laps where you can really feel out your stuff. I think it's going to get spread out here just a little bit, and there, that green flag run like you talked about. Eford to really slow on the restarts jacks the field back up and then goes but uh green flag we are back underway that's a little bit of a dirty trick but uh it's nothing wrong with it in the rule book so he uh is making it work for him doesn't look like it's fooling Mikoff. he is still glued to that back bumper of jason Eford. i tell you mikoff has been real impressive here early on i think he really has something for Eford and uh maybe someone to watch here over the next couple laps let's go on board mike too tall medill who's got a pretty stout go-kart as he's challenging rj for third yeah too has been impressive all weekend here and you know his extra height i would think is a disadvantage but uh, maybe it's given some sort of strange aero advantage you see how rough the track is today uh they had to prep the track late and uh i think these carts are actually running it in right now they're gonna try and smooth it out as they go yeah, I mean, it is about uh, negative 100 degrees here, so uh, the weather is definitely affecting the track condition and the preparation. you got to think of how tall Too Tall is. When he hits a bump, his head is way higher than everybody else's, so you're going to see that on the camera. Oh, oh Too Tall's in the wall, and it uh, looks like oh, it's caution. caution's out. And uh, let's look at that again in the back straight massage instant replay, Charles. Well, you know, I think I just jumped the cushion there a little bit and, and hit the wall, sucked him in, and uh, that was it. He was going to get out of that. Let's hope the toe isn't knocked out on that go-kart for too tall's sake. His cart was so strong, and uh, you jump that cushion, and there's no grip. Well, yes, absolutely. He may have jumped the cushion for the simple fact that he hit a bump, and his head went, in, <laughs> went into the clouds. <laughs> that, is, that is a good possibility, and uh, you see the field, field getting ready to restart. You, you ever try to go in an airplane through clouds? You're not going to see nothing. That's what happened. <laughs> That's true. A lot of turbulence up there in absolutely. the sky. Uh, field, getting, green. <laughs> field getting ready. Green flag is out. We're back underway. Eford still takes the lead going into one, uh, but he does have a little bit more challenge at every restart. Yeah, it looks like uh, looking back here at the other guys, Holzbauer, Kolb, and Maycroft, the other guys, is uh, too tall once again, adding pressure to RJ Auto's bumper. And uh, Mikoff 
giving uh, Eford a little bit of a run for his money. Yeah, I tell you, Mikoff is right there. He's pull, He struggles on the restarts a little bit, but within a lap or two, he's on Eford's bumper. I really think this is going to be a battle to watch. Too Tall Medill putting the bumper to RJ, and you're looking at the four best carts so far in this field, and look at the gap back to fifth, sixth, seventh, and uh, an impressive battle right there with these guys. Let's go on board Eddie Hunt Jr. and check it out. Yeah, Eddie's still running up top right on that cushion, and watch the momentum he gets here. Right to his bumper, run the top group. It helps to keep the engine wound up, as they say, and uh, he gets a good run there on Clint Stanley. Yeah, I really like what Eddie's doing here. He's uh, right in the middle of the hornet's nest, but uh, I think he's going to pick him off one at a time and uh, come up through the field here. Here he goes, right on the outside. Oh, and another caution is out, and this time it was a guy who was running second. Sean Mikoff seems to be having an engine problem. Man, that's a tough break. Like I said earlier over and over again, he was definitely one guy that could run with Eford, and it was just a matter of time. Oh, we got another, we got another issue. It's like R.J. Otto and Matt Holzbauer got locked up there under caution. Yeah, R.J. was probably waving to his girlfriend or, or his little brother or something there and, and ran him over but um now he's out trying to fix it oh no he's uh peeling a piece of debris off his fender oh well, yeah there you go you talked about sean Mikoff. uh nobody goes a lap down in the dnq karting series so he can go fix his cart and then come back out and run Hope, and hope, could possibly win and hopefully it wasn't terminal because like i said it's a it is a long enough race where you know if you have a good enough cart you can do it bronson butcher this is bob duato in the booth uh how's everything going down there yeah, we're not doing too bad. We're hanging in there. Uh, struggling for some grip right now. Uh, just haven't quite got the fight we need in the tyres. And uh, a lot of these guys up front, they're pulling away from us, coming out of the turns. Uh, I think they're, you know, doing a little, something a little special with their motors, but uh, we'll see how long they can last. Um, we've already had a couple drop out, so hopefully we'll hang in there for the final laps and... Uh, Hopefully, Green get a good finish. Well, good luck out there, Bronson. Uh, field getting ready to go again. Jason Eford, another slow start, but Green flags back out. Now, look at this. Two tall Medill is all up to second as a restart, and I really think, man, he's he's doing well. You see that thing power down the back stretch. Obviously, Eford and Medill have very strong engines, and you knew Rainier's cart was going to be fast. Yeah, uh, like I, like we said, Rainier's. 58 is a is a one to beat at every cart track you see it at and uh, you can see the the separation there between second and third must be that wedge body you know all the side force i bet they had that thing down at aerodyne checking the side force numbers oh yeah they I, really have a big board on the yeah, side yeah they like i said the 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 footage earlier to valence they they have engineers down there making stuff right uh neil i've seen him down there and he was tweaking on that thing and uh I know he's got, oh, trouble right there. Jason Eford, our leader, oh, no. stopped on the track. That's going to bring a Danny. It's O-time caution. Wow, what a tough break. I mean, dominating performance since lap one. Wonder what happened there to cause this. Uh, I'm not sure, but it definitely looks like it's a power issue, and Eford he's knows unbuckle. it. He's, he's out. He's, he's done. Yeah, it looks like he's unbuckling, and, uh, man, what a what a tough break for Eford. He had this race in the bag, basically. I mean, all weekend he was... He was the one everyone said. He showed them what it was going to be. We're going back green. Too Tall Medill now in the lead. Too Tall Medill in the lead. Holzbauer, Colbin third. Maycroft battling in fourth with RJ Otto. And Sean Meekoff is back out there. Yeah, Meekoff coming up through the field uh, like a hot knife through butter. Here he is. And uh, if he can be patient, he will get back to the front, I promise. Two wide. That's what you got to love about Millbridge Speedway is we're on board with Bronson Butcher. His carts can run too wide. A lot of these go-kart tracks in North Carolina area – you can't run too wide. As you see, Bronson turning more right than he is left, Charles. Yeah, Bronson. No, oh, well, we got uh, Meekoff back off the pace here. Yeah, uh, Bronson looks like he's he's very loose right now, Charles. Yeah, Bronson, you know, he's just looks like he's hanging on more than driving it, but uh, he's he's a driver. He can handle it. Yeah, that's impressive when you're turning the wheel more right than left. As you see, Brian Kolb and Maycroft battling it out right there with Holzbauer sitting there and Bronson right behind him. Yeah, look at the... Uh, the lead too tall, just pulling away. I, he just hit his marks every lap, having a good time, and uh, just plain relaxing right now, knocking laps off. Too tall, not even showing that he was an amateur, which he gave up amateur status to come run this race. Yeah, too tall is no amateur. This guy, though he's about two feet too tall to race professionally, he is full of talent and uh, a great time on the weekends as well. Absolutely, and uh, now we're seeing why Lauren Rainier tapped him to drive this go-kart. 
yeah, Lauren doesn't pick guys off the street to drive his stuff. You gotta be, you gotta be w able to win for him to put you in seat. Looks like RJ Auto is starting to catch Too Tall a little bit as he's looking down here at the backstretch, and uh, looks like Too Tall's advantage is slowly shrinking. I'll tell you, I see that as well. RJ, uh, you know, must have that tire prep uh, time for the midpoint to the end. And uh, we're on board with Too Tall lapping the 51 of J.P. Egbert. Too Tall getting some lap traffic here. And uh, another one, Josh Heidenkamp up in front of him. Uh, Ty Snipes, actually. Sorry about that. But, you know, Too Tall looks like he diamonds the corner a little bit more than R.J. does. R.J. holds it out a little bit longer to get that arc. But his roll speed is so much faster than Too Tall's. You see, he enters a little bit later. Well, R.J. has, I would say, countless laps here. And I believe Too Tall's first time here. So that's just plain seat time and experience. And it looks like there's going to be a battle here next uh, couple corners. Battle for the lead, Medill and Otto. Looks like uh, Medill got a little loose up in the loose stuff there. And uh, you see RJ, a veteran, probably was saving his tires. And now he's starting to know, hey, I'm a little bit past halfway as he battles inside for the lead. Looks like Too Tall gave him position. Maybe he can just ride here. No, comes back on the inside. Too Tall, classical crossover move. Puts RJ up in the loose stuff. I'll tell you, that was an impressive move by Tutal. That's a talent that uh, Rainier saw when Tutal was running over the summer and uh, takes the lead back, pull, starting to pull away just a tick. Yeah, and, uh, you know, these guys are battling it out, and uh, caution is out. That is going to be our 10-to-go caution, Charles. Ten laps left in this race. Yeah, that DNQ tradition, ten laps to go. The caution comes out, get the field back together for one more sprint. Ronson Butcher, this is uh, Bob Duato up in the booth. You got us? Yeah, I got you, Bob. Tend to go here. What do you have to do to get the best finish possible? There's a couple people behind us right now who have held back in some wrecks. We'll try and hold them off for the final laps. And we'll see what goes on here. Might be a bit of beating and banging. And uh, try and come away with a top five, if not a top three. All right, well, good luck out there, and hopefully you get a good finish. Thanks, man. Field bunch back up. Tend to go. What do you expect, Charles? I expect RJ to really, really give uh, Too Tall a run for his money here as we go green. Green flag is out. Ten laps to go. I'll tell you what, Too Tall pulled away, but here comes RJ Otto on the inside. RJ got a heck of a run off of one and two and now working the inside of Medill here. And Medill trying to run the high line here. RJ uh, still holding tough on the inside. Too Tall pinches him down but can't do it. RJ Otto to the lead. Too Tall Medill gives a oh. shot to Otto. Wow, oh my he's goodness. not messing around here, is he? No, Too Tall wants this win. You can taste it, and uh, he doesn't want to give it up easy. See the car card up there of J.P. Egbert going to stay up high. Is he? Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. oh, no. Oh, my God. Egbert gets, gets oh, run no. over by Medill, and the caution is out. It, you wow. know, we said you could have spotters, wow. and uh, I don't know why J.P. didn't have one, and he's visibly upset. I'll tell you what, J.P. really – oh, he's throwing a neck brace. I'm not sure why he's mad. That was 110% his fault. Poor Too Tall. Chance to win. Almost a dominating performance, at least in the second half, and taken out by a uh, slow car, J.P. Egbert. J.P. Egbert probably had the nicest card here. Oh, struggled, absolutely. Struggled Beautiful. with fuel issues. Beautiful and, uh, equipment. Very frustrated, as you see right there. Oh, no. Kicks, oh, oh, man. No. Oh, man. Oh, no. Frustration sometimes gets kids, you nowhere. Kids, this is not a way to handle yourself. Let's look at that again in the leading edge graphics since a replay, Charles. Yeah, Too Tall is uh, got the preferred lane here. JP cuts him off. I'm not sure if uh, JP thought RJ was three-quarters of a lap ahead of the field, but he was not and uh, took Too Tall to contention here. Yeah, that's a, a shame for both parties. We had such a good race going, and uh, you see it from Eddie DeHunt Jr.'s camera there. The two hung up, and Matt Holzbauer actually spun oh, out no, avoiding yeah. him. Yeah, that's, uh, Eddie did a great job of avoiding there, uh, really heads up driving. Well, you see uh, RJ Otto, Eric Maycroft up to second, Kolb, Holzbauer, Butcher, Stanley DeHunt, Heidkamp, and there's two tall, and uh, what a shame. Eight laps to go. Field getting ready to take the restart. I don't think Too Tall has a time to get back to the front, but uh, it's going to be fun to watch uh, him try. Eight laps to go, and uh, you see him lagging back there on that restart. Well, with eight to go, maybe he can get through this field. Green flag back underway. Look at Bronson Butcher all the way up to fifth. That's an impressive day for him as well. He was uh, he he wasn't too, wasn't in the fight there early on. Bronson, I mean, you look at him in the in-car camera. He never once turned left all day. No, he's he's fighting an ill-handling Ill cart there, but uh, he's really making up for it the best he can. 
RJ Auto has walked a dog on this field in front of Maycroft. Let's watch uh, Tutal as he tries to make his way through the field. Tutal on the bottom there, again, pinched off by Bronson, but uh, Bronson has nothing for him. Uh, Tutal Medill just strolling here. Don't know if he has enough time, but he is not giving up. That thing is a beast. I mean, uh, I s watch this right here on Holzbach. Wow, just, <laughs> power move. Turns right down him, blows his doors off, basically. Yeah, and uh, absolutely. He's up to fourth already. I'll tell you what, he is putting on a show for the kids. The thing is, just three laps to go, he needs a caution. Is he going to get a caution? I don't know, but he's working on Brian Cole. But uh, while all that is going on, RJ Otto looks at two to go. I wonder if RJ Otto is going to th – how much – Brandon Up's tires uh, affect his event here, uh, but yeah, uh, white flags out and looks like uh, big lead here. Looks like RJ is going to walk away with this race as uh, uncontested and the first ever DNQ dirt race. RJ Auto takes the win. Wow, what a great event for RJ! Really wasn't in contention early, but uh, congratulations to him and uh, his crew. He had such good speed rolling the center of the corner, and as you see there, it looks like uh, physically he's, he's yeah he's oh, done. He's he lays down. Let's talk with our fifth, uh, sixth place finisher, Bronson Butcher. Finishing fifth in today's event is Bronson Butcher, sponsor of the race today, back straight massage 40. Bronson, it, we are expecting a little bit more out of you, but uh, what happened out there today, and what could you tell us about your run? Uh, it was a, I'd say it's a solid run. Um, we kind of missed a little bit in the heat race, uh, so we started back in the field. Uh, first half of the race, we were really loose. Uh, but the crew did a good job, and Bronson pushed the motorsports team, and uh, the cart came to life in the second half. Uh, we just couldn't quite, didn't have quite have the speed or the equipment to run with the top three. Uh, but it was a solid day after all, coming away with top five, and that's what I said I wanted to do. And uh, now it was just a really great event, and I can't wait for next time. Bronson, your parents are probably eager to hear from you later tonight when they wake up in Australia on Australia Day. How do you think they're going to feel that you didn't bring home the trophy in their sponsored race? Oh, I'm sure they'll withdraw their uh, financial support of Bronson Butcher Motorsports a little bit from now on. Uh, but I'll have to smooth them over and see what we can come up with for the 2014 season. There you have it from Bronson Butcher, our fifth place finisher today. We could use some more sponsorship in the DQ Karting Series, so Bronson, go ahead and start selling your parents on the next race, or we're going to be loading up and going home. <laughs> As you see, RJ Auto here getting a big hug from cart owner Douglas Biggs and uh, the other cart owner, Greg Beef Tips Molino, extremely happy to take home the win today. But uh, one driver who's not happy is down with Stephen DeHaan. Here, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, and down here in the pits right now with J.P. Egbert. J.P. had a problem on the racetrack earlier. Incident with Michael Tutal Medill while he was battling for the lead, and J.P. was getting lapped. J.P., there was some frustration going on there. What happened out there? Uh, I was just having trouble on the restarts all day. My uh, having a fuel uh, issue. I was just stumbling around and wouldn't go, and it would take a while for it to go out. It was my fault. Uh, JP, the Daniel Quinn entry that you are running today in the number 51 machine was just not up to par. Do you work on this thing, or does Charles Lewandowski put the bolts on that car? By the looks of it, you'd think Charles was working on it. But, uh, no, he was me. I got nobody to blame on myself. What can you do to come back here next time and have a better finish? Get a motor that runs. That's what I need. J.P. Egbert going from Wagner Engines to maybe a PME before this next race. Well, it sounds like J.P. Egbert was too busy waxing the wheels on his car instead of working on the motor issues. But uh, as we look at this replay one more time, yeah, J.P. just makes a rookie mistake. Doesn't know Too Tall is even remotely close to him and uh, cost Too Tall a uh, chance at the trophy and the check for today. Let's talk to Too Tall. Too Tall had a great run going until he got caught up with J.P. Egbert. Too Tall, what can you tell us about today? Heck of a motor you have underneath that thing. Man, we had some steam. I got to thank uh, Ryan Flores and his whole crew on that one. Uh, this this motor actually used to haul Richie Evans' fat ass around uh, field fillers, so it kind of tells you what it is. Um, but, yeah, it was, a, it was a solid day. Too Tall, I mean, that is an, an impressive machine right there, the Rainier Racing entry. What could you say about the guy who feels these cars, Lauren Rainier? Always, always competitive, no matter where they go, whether it's Field Fillers or Millbridge Speedway. What could you tell us about such a great car owner? 
Oh, uh, well, he just wants to see his stuff run up front. I mean, we don't want to come out here and run second or third like we did today, but granted, we'd never been here before, and we ran that bad when we first started field filler. So it's a step forward, and I think this program is going to head the right direction, especially once we get two carts going. Michael Tutal Medill going to have two carts next season. Look for him tonight at Hot Shots. Well, sorry to hear that from Tutal. Uh, Charles, let's take a look at the Back Straight Massage 40 final results. RJ Otto came home with a big win. Uh, Eric Maycroft, an impressive second. Mike Tutal Medill back from the rear to finish third. Brian Kolb finished fourth. Matt Holzbauer, fifth. Bronson Butcher, sixth. Clint Stanley, seventh. Eddie DeHunt Jr., eighth. Josh Heidenkamp, ninth, and J.P. Egbert. Let's go down and talk to Stephen Duhant, who is with our second-place finisher, Eric Maycroft. I'm here in the pit area, the number 13 Valvoline machine of Eric Maycroft. Eric coming home second place today and walks away with an Australian boomerang and a $40 purse. Eric, what could you tell us about your run today? Uh, I had a lot of fun out there. Uh, wish I had a better clutch. I got to thank Holzbauer for giving me a clutch so I could be here. But uh, I was struggling a little bit on the restarts and uh, didn't have anything for him at the end there, though. Eric, there's going to be a lot of guys who go home and do a lot of changes to their carts, whether it's engines, tires, suspension, clutch, and there is no suspension in the go-kart, so we're going to skip past that. I said that. What are you going to do to make yours better? I'm going to get a clutch and a big-ass carburetor. <laughs> well, there you hear it from Eric, second-place finisher today. He's going to go home and get a big-ass clutch and carburetor for the next race. RJ Auto had a good cart all day, and he picks up the win in the first-ever DNQ dirt race and he's down with Derek Pernasiglio. First ever appearance here at the Millbridge Speedway. RJ Otto walks home with a back straight massage 40, a 10 lap race, a 10 lap, uh, a 30 lap race, a 10 lap dash. This has got to be a huge win for you. Yeah, by far. This is probably the most mental go kart race I've ever ran. It's uh, most races that are 40 laps in go karts, they let you change tires halfway. Uh, but you just got to be smooth and at first I was worried and uh, ended up being pretty good uh, I've been telling everybody all week you know they're not gonna beat me on motor they're I'm gonna beat them on tires when did you know during the course of the race that you had a chance to go for the lead uh, I seen too tall get real tight there uh, I chased him down and I just ride I was riding riding and finally we got to the dash and then that's when I hit the green light we had to go how tiring and how stressful was the race? Because you climbed out of the car, the first thing you did was lay right on the ground. Was it mentally exhausting, physically exhausting, or a combination of, of both? Definitely both. Definitely both. This place is rough and it's real physical. So 40 laps here is really tough. DNQ Karting Series, a bunch of tough guys that go out there and race. And they came here to the dirt, they came to your territory, but you showed them how to get it done, didn't you? Yeah, sure did. Hope we can do it again and uh, try it again. So you go two for two. That's RJ Otto, winner here for the DNQ Karting Series, the first ever event here at the Millbridge Speedway on dirt. And one of the regulars here knows how to get around this place and got it done this afternoon, guys. Well, what a race today we had, Charles, for the first DNQ dirt race. Oh, absolutely. Exciting from start to finish. Can't wait to see the next one. Well, it was the first race we've ever had. We'll definitely have one again, but today, RJ Otto came home with the win. This has been a production of the DNQ Karting Series. Any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this race without the express written consent of the DNQ Karting Series is prohibited. The DNQ Karting Series would like to thank its fans for their continued support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.